So three of these pedestals are going to be bigger pedestals and roughly the same size, and then the other two are going to be slightly smaller. And I'm going to cut those after out of the leftover pieces. Now I already mapped out my dimensions on paper, and I do that just so I could see which is the best way to lay out all my cuts and to get the most out of each material. Now for the three bigger pedestals, the largest dimension is going to be the height, and they're Two of them are going to be 24 by 24, and the other one's going to be 20. So I'm going to be cutting these three bigger strips out of three pieces of MDF for those because they'll take up the whole strip. Now my shop is so small it's really hard to cut down full sheets of ply, or in this case MDF, in the shop. So I usually rough cut it and then square it up on my table saw. Since the key to this process is going to be having pieces as uniform as possible to start with, I decided to take the time to set up a straight edge and rip these to final dimensions outside. So the from the blade to the edge of my fence on this saw is an inch and a half. So I marked my original line and then an inch and a half over, and then I had this 4x4 four four that is fairly straight. and. There's some shadows that you can kind of see that it follows that line all the way to the end. So I'm going to use this message method to cut all of my heights. Even with those heights cut, this is still going to be too long to cut um, inside my shop. So then I'm going to cut these in half since these pieces are going to be 24 inches. I'll have enough to cut these in half to get two of my sides out of each of these two halves. So I'm going to be ripping them long ways then cutting them in half. And I'm going to do that for the three bigger boxes and cut all these pieces at once. So I have my stacks of four for each of these pedestals kind of scattered around my shop. And the next thing I'm going to do before I cut all the miters on these are cut the tops. So for I think two of the pedestals they're 24 by 24 which means the top's going to be 24 by 24 as well. And another one's 20 by 20 so obviously this top's going to be 20 by 20. So I have um, some scrap left over from those larger sheets of MDF and I'm just going to cut this one in half and then rip my two 24 by 24 tops and then a 20 by 20 and the other two are smaller. I think it's 9 by 9 and 12 by 12 and I'll cut those out of the little scrap on the end. All my stacks are cut and I went through and put a piece of tape on each stack, giving each stack um, a unique number. So this is stack 5, they're all labeled 5, and the top piece I put a T after the number just because, not necessarily on this one, but some of the other stacks, the top is a similar side to the sides, and the top's going to get miters on all three corners, all four corners, whereas the sides are only going to get miters on three, so it's just easier to be able to visually see which one's top quickly without trying to measure all your sides consistently. Also, the nice thing about the tape is if you reference the tape as being the top of your side, since you're going to be cutting four on this one and three on this one, you don't want to be cutting the bottoms for the style pedestal I'm making for this customer. So if you see the five, you'll know that this is face up and you're cutting the right way as well. 
So I do not have one of those dial indicators that's um, magnetically stick to your saw blade that tells you the exact degree of your blade. If you have one of those, that's great. It will help you with this project. I don't. So I just set my dial indicator on the table saw to 45 and test cut two scraps. Flipped it over and added some tape to the back side, which is actually how you're going to assemble these pedestals and then took a measurement of my corner. My corner is measuring a perfect 90 degrees, which means these 45s are close enough to being perfect for me and I could start cutting all of my pieces. So I'm going to start off by cutting box number two, and that's because box number two is a perfect 24 inch cube. So the four sides and the top are all going to be the same dimension, which means I could set my fence up once and make all of my miter cuts. For the top, that's going to be all four sides, and for the sides, that's going to be three sides. So since this is 24 inches, and this is half inch MDF, I raise my blade to a little over, just cutting through this MDF, and I set my fence to 23 and a half. That half inch is going to kick in the half inch miter I need and should cut this perfectly to that 24 inches. If you stand at the back of your saw and you sight down, you can kind of see that that blade is going to cut through perfectly right at the top of your corner to keep your pre-cut dimension at 24, but give you the miter you need. So after cutting that first box, I dry fit it together with a couple pieces of masking tape which are actually peeling off the sides because the MDF is covered with dust. But just from that little mock-up you could see how all the pieces fit together with those miters and the top fits on there really nice as well. So I'm going to use this same method to set my fence to cut all my pieces and cut the other four boxes. The next box I'm going to be cutting is the biggest box, and that one is 24 by 24 by 30, which means the top is 24 by 24, and all of my sides are 24 inches wide, so I could cut the miters on two of my the two sides and all of the top with the same measurement from the box before, because that's set at that perfect 24 inches. So. Once that's done, I'm going to have to adjust it to cut all my tops. But one thing I'm changing the second time around, which I should have done the first time, but I wasn't thinking of it, is I added a feather board to my table saw. Now on this pedestal, one of the other ones, the dimension is too tall for my table saw to cut safely that miter. So for the sides of this one and the sides of the next one I'm going to cut, I'm going to hold off on that and set up a jig in order to cut the same increment off of the tops of these and I'll do all of those eight at once. So next is number three, and number three is 20 by 20 by 36. So again, I won't be cutting the top because it's too tall for my table saw, but I could cut all the sides and the entire top piece, all four sides. Now this one, since it's 20 inches across, I set my fence to 19 and a half. And before I cut all these, I always do a test to make sure it's going perfectly. So at that 19 and a half, you can see At that 19 and a half, you could see how it cuts right up to that corner, just how you want it to. So I could send all these through as well.
The last pedestal, number five, is a little baby pedestal, so I could cut all those sides without setting up some sort of special um, setup for the top because these are only nine by nine by twelve. So I set my fence to eight and a half, and I did a test cut, and now I could send these sides through all all the sides of the top and then I can adjust it to cut off just the top of the four sides. So the height of the little pedestal is 12 inches, so to cut off just this top piece so that top could fit into it, I set my fence again at 11 and a half and I could run it through and miter off just this top. In order to cut the tops of all these long pieces, I moved my fence to the left hand side of my blade and then put a sacrificial fence attached to my real fence so that this 45 degree blade doesn't cut into my real fence. Then using my miter gauge leveled out at 90 degrees, I could slide these pieces through and it will cut the same amount off the tops of all of these boards. This is the test piece I ran through and I made minor adjustments until it cut it the same way it did the sides. So now I could take all those long pieces and run the tops through and have a perfect cut on each one without having to change any of the setup.